Turns out I was wrong. Catherine Howard was interested in one thing and one thing alone. Becoming the Queen of England and all the wealth and power that came with it. And when she married me, she accidentally, on purpose, forgot to dump her other boyfriends. I knew nothing about this, of course, until one day somebody left me an anonymous note on my church pew telling me the whole sorry saga. First of all, understandably, I was devastated. Then I was angry! Catherine was immediately arrested, sent to the tower. She was put on trial for high treason. And unsurprisingly, she was found guilty as charged. Hello, I'm Charlotte Shook, Year 5 teacher at Shaftesbury Junior School. Just had a visit from Neil Bakewell um, as Henry VIII. Um, it was a really great day. The kids were so engaged, loved the activities, um, questions in there. They were learning so much without realising that it was a lesson. And they have all had such a big smile on their face all day and got really involved with all the activities. So thank you, really great. Um, we really enjoyed it. At the age of 15, my brother Arthur developed a disease that we used to fear terribly in Tudor England. A sweating sickness. At breakfast time, he was fine. Then, he started to sweat. And by dinner time, he was dead. Thousands of people in Tudor England died from this mysterious illness. And even your clever modern doctors today don't know what this sickness was. But Arthur Tudor, Prince of Wales, heir to the throne of England, was dead. This meant I was no longer the spare. I was now heir to the throne of England. It wasn't Anne that got the surprise. It was me. Because instead of the attractive young woman in the portrait, the woman stood in front of me, looked more like a horse. I was not a happy man. I took Cromwell outside and I grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. And I said, Cromwell, I am not marrying this horse. Boy, fetch me my sword. Anne Boleyn's head turned to watch the footsteps of the boy disappear down the far side of the scaffold. And as it did so, very swiftly and very quietly, the execution of Calais bent down and picked up the sword he'd kept hidden in the straw at his feet. And as Anne Boleyn was still watching, the footsteps of the boy disappear down the far side of the scaffold. From behind, the execution of Calais raised his sword and with one fell swoop, severed the head of the Queen of England.